Hey guys, welcome to Cyber Platter. Today we'll learn about secure coding practices. Okay. So what are secure coding practices? It is a set of rules or guidelines, techniques, or you know, best practices that are used by the developers when they write a code, software code. This is mainly to minimize the security vulnerabilities and mitigate the potential risks. You need to follow secure coding practices to prevent unauthorized access, any data breaches, and a very and various types of attacks on software applications. Now let's discuss some of the key secure coding practices. The first coding practice that we'll discuss is input validation. This is a process to check and verify the information or data that a user enters into a software application. OK, it makes sure that the data is safe it is valid and it is in some expected format. Okay, Think of it like a gatekeeper, you know, who's checking who's entering a party. OK, gatekeeper's role is to make sure that only invited guests get inside the party, right? Exactly like that in software input validation acts as a gatekeeper to filter out any harmful or incorrect information. Let some of the examples of input validation. Suppose say there is a form on a portal website that you need to enter your age. So here you can make sure that only numbers are allowed for the, for any user to input the data because it is age. And you can also make sure that the age is between a reasonable range, like for example, say 1 to 150. Another example is email validation. Suppose say you're signing up for an account. Input validation ensures that the email address entered follows the correct format like you know at gmail.com right when you're creating a password you can uh, input validation is used to check the password strength uh, it checks if it meets certain criteria like you know minimum uh, length inclusion of both letters and numbers there are there is one special character even when you upload uh, files it can check for the size only so and so size is allowed or this file type is allowed you know it this can all this can help to prevent uploading any potentially harmful files. OK, input validation helps to protect the software application from various types of attacks. OK, like for example, uh, SQL injection, cross site uh, scripting. It prevents data corruption by ensuring that only valid and expected data is accepted. It helps maintain the integrity of the application's data. Another uh, coding practice that we'll discuss is say secure communication. That is, it is a practice of employing encryption and secure protocols to protect data that is transmitted over networks. Okay, This makes sure that the data is confidential and it cannot be easily uh, intercepted or tampered by an unauthorized individual. Like for example, your encryption your data and then uh, you're using secure protocols like for example HTTPS, uh, SSL, TLS uh, to provide a secure channel for trans a data transmission between a client like for example a web browser and a server. So these protocols established an encrypted connection okay between the client and the server and make sure that make sure that the data exchange between them remains confidential and protected. And then we can use authentication. Authentication steps make sure that the client and the server, right, they know each other. This is to prevent any unauthorized entities from intercepting or impersonating the communication. Okay. Then the third practice is use of uh, secure libraries and frameworks. So we have to make sure that only well-known and reputable uh, libraries and frameworks that have like a great track record of being secure and regularly updated are being used in your applications. Like for example, instead of writing your own encryption algorithm, uh, you can use well-known library like OpenSSL or Bcrypt. Or instead of creating your own password management system, you can use a well-known and tested library to manage your passwords. And then we have have authentication and authorization. Authentication makes sure to verify the identity of a user and authorization tells us which user can do what. OK, so we need to implement secure authentication and authorization mechanisms to provide access to the users and make sure that they have appropriate access privileges based on their roles and permissions. Then the fifth secure coding practice is related to the password storage. 
make sure that the passwords are either encrypted or hashed. You can also add salt to the passwords to prevent uh, brute force attacks. Okay, And passwords should never ever be stored in plain text. And another uh, secure coding practice is to avoid hard coding sensitive information. Like for example, your passwords, uh, your API keys, or any other sensitive information in your source code, your configuration files, or database tables right never hard code them like you can store sensitive information in environment variables uh, which are separate from the source code and it might make it more difficult for the attackers to access it proper error handling is required to prevent information leakage that can be exploited by any attacker okay like for example instead of showing a detailed error message you know that is revealing sensitive information show something that is very generic this is the display page that we are talking that is displayed to the user okay so you can all the you can have all the details in a log file and display very generic and minimal error message to a user like for example you can avoid revealing too much information about uh, the server like you know stack traces or server uh, software versions should not be displayed the next secure coding practice is to have the software updated regularly with latest security patches and fixes this is to address any known vulnerabilities okay and you need to make sure that all software dependencies frameworks libraries are all up to date with the latest security patches and updates the next practice is secure deployment make sure that you securely deploy the software by minimizing the attack surface that is you're using secure integrations and secure infrastructure For example you can deploy deploy the applications in secure containers and use uh, secure network configurations to protect any unauthorized access another secure coding practice is awareness and training this is to provide security awareness and training to the developers so that they you know they know what is a secure coding practice and how to mitigate risks why is it important and how does it affect an organization or a person the next uh, coding practice is security testing that means you are performing regular security testing such as you know pen tests that is penetration testings or code reviews to identify vulnerabilities and weaknesses in the application's code this allows us to proactively address any potential security risks okay you can use automated security testing tools for this you can also hire a security expert to conduct penetration testing and identify any vulnerabilities the next practice is secure third party dependencies that means in coding it refers to the external libraries or frameworks or components that the developers utilize in their software applications okay you have to make sure to use these dependencies very secure and responsible manner to minimize the risk of introducing vulnerabilities or any weaknesses into an application why do people usually use third party dependencies it is mostly because to save time and effort in creating their own okay but at the same time you have to make sure you evaluate the security of these dependencies and when they are kept up to date you have to keep monitoring the security advisories the developers should stay informed about any security vulnerabilities associated with their third party dependencies or if there is any patch released for these third party dependencies that needs to be uh, deployed so these are some of the key secure coding practices uh, something that i forgot to mention while talking about authentication and authorization this also refers to access control so you're implementing role based access control to ensure that users can only access resources and functionalities that they can that they are authorized to access okay like for example only admins can access admin uh, dashboards of an application only admins can edit something not all the users are allowed to edit it so now if somebody asks you about secure coding practices you should be able to tell them what is a secure coding practice why is it uh, used why is it required and what are some of the key secure coding practices that are usually used by the developers thank you so much for watching i will see you in another video with another topic until then bye bye